Welcome to Working in Teams, Life Cycle of HIT Teams, Reforming and Repositioning Techniques. The objectives for Life Cycle of HIT Teams, Reforming and Repositioning Techniques are to classify the life cycle stages of a team, apply strategies to move a team into the next formative stage, reposition a team for a new challenge. With the rapidly changing healthcare field, including rapidly changing medical knowledge, emerging skills and techniques, and the technological impetus for implementation and meaningful use of electronic health records, the old adage is true, the only thing constant is change. Healthcare teams need to be able to change and adapt efficiently, effectively, and with minimal stress to their environments. Time spent on an HIT team needs to be efficient and productive, especially if there are prescribers such as doctors, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and nursing staff involved. These team members are taking time away from caring for patients in order to accomplish the team's charge. Let's take a moment to look at how the following can change as the team moves through the life cycle stages. Team leader style, team reaction to leadership, team process, trust within the team, how decisions are made. We will look at the stages of team development. In 1965, Bruce W. Tuckman's important model of the team development process began to help teams understand and analyze the stages of successful group evolution. As defined by Tuckman, these stages are forming, storming, norming, performing. A team leader's style should evolve throughout the life cycle stages. During the forming stage, the team will need a more directive approach and a clear structure. Once norming occurs, leaders can become more of a shared team member, only directing when necessary or to help develop consensus. At storming, the leader needs to be supportive, continuing positive team momentum by actively listening, generating ideas, and managing any conflicts. During performing, leadership is shared between team members. A team's reaction to leadership also changes throughout the life cycles. During forming, members are cautious and take a wait-and-see approach. This tentative approach does not imply support. In storming, team members become more vocal and comfortable with expressing their opinions and ideas. Informing mutual respect underpins general support for the leadership. In performing, personal relationships have developed to further strengthen the leadership relationship. During the forming stage, the team process is driven by the leader. The process is likely to break down until conflict is resolved in the storming stage and should go smoothly in the norming stage. In performing, process functions well and is adjusted as necessary. Trust within the team is critical for the team to work as a productive unit. During the forming stage, individual team members are not clear about their role and parameters. Trust may start to build. In the storming stage, trust is focused as subgroups and alliances start to form. During the norming stage, roles are made clearer and trust and relationships develop to a greater degree. By the performing stage, the team members have high levels of trust loyalty develops. How decisions are made is also impacted by the maturity of the team. In forming, the leader is expected to make the decisions. More vocal team members may dominate. In storming, members are more likely to be steadfast in their opinions. Compromise, not consensus, is often the outcome. In norming, the team is able to come to a common decision that is win-win. In performing, decisions are made easier and can even be left to smaller groups. The HIT team mentioned a few slides ago would do well to reach the performing stage of teaming in a relatively short amount of time. All team members need to be aware of the importance to reach this goal quickly. As we move toward developing strategies for team movement through the various phases of the team's life cycle, it is important to visit some of the fundamental principles and actions for change management. We will look at five key change management principles, 
steps to successful change, and dynamic processes. Throughout this unit, we will use the following HIT team example. There is an orthopedic surgeon's practice that has 10 orthopedic surgeons that move between four offices in a large city. The surgeons have decided to purchase four digital X-ray machines and incorporate teleradiology into the practice. They have assembled a team consisting of two orthopedic surgeons who will divide the meetings between the two, two nurses, two radiology technicians, one office manager. The goal is to spend eight weeks with a total of eight meetings to find the best system and equipment for the four offices. At the basic level, change management involves energy toward gaining acceptance and buy-in from others in the organization. Your team will be successful only when it can accomplish this important change management principle. Keeping your team's position in the organizational structure clear and focused is another important principle to consider. Gaining the full team's support for its mission and developing smart, that is, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound action plans are key to success. The team can only achieve success if it can facilitate its ideas forward to others in the organization. This means much weight should be placed on the ability to communicate the results of the team's deliverables. Another framework to consider for helping to facilitate a team's successful progression through the life cycle and achieving successful results is displayed in John Cotter's Steps to Successful Change. Cotter is considered an expert in change management. Increase urgency by energizing team members to develop scenarios about what might happen and by providing real-life context for objectives. Build the guiding team by inviting dedicated, enthusiastic participants with the right mix of skills and expertise. Get your vision right by collaborating with the team to agree on a simple vision and strategy and by concentrating on the emotional and creative drivers of productivity. Communicate for buy-in by engaging as many people as you can in the team's progression. Clarify the essential steps to move forward using technology as appropriate to deliver your message. To go back to our example case, at the team's first meeting, the two orthopedic surgeons both attend. They explain the need for finding the best digital radiology system for the practice. The nurses understand that the system will cut the wait time for patients and that the practice will be able to not only resolve the patient's needs more efficiently, but also increase the number of patients seen in a day. The radiology technicians appreciate the possibility of reducing the number of repeat x-rays by using the office manager is focused on having a system that will incorporate patient billing. To continue Cotter's steps to successful change, empower action by removing hindrances and facilitating helpful feedback and encouragement from team leaders. Acknowledge both group and individual successes. Create short-term wins by breaking your progress into achievable goals. Accomplish each goal before tackling the next one. Don't let determination and persistence flag. Remind the team that change is continuous and report progress regularly, highlighting important achievements. Make changes permanent by reiterating their value through promotion and other rewards. The team meets for the next several weeks and understands the needs of each office and collectively outlines the SMART action plan. Everyone on the team understands their specific deliverables and is eager to begin the process of choosing a system. As each person's deliverable is completed, the entire team reviews and provides meaningful feedback. Ideally, the turnaround for the reviewed deliverable is the following meeting. The milestones should be realized on the day determined by the action plan. Another key component for managing successful change is to use dynamic processes. Structures and processes that are rigid is an added impediment to change. If you establish sound, strategic vision with adaptable processes, your team, from the beginning, will have the expectation and be comfortable with adapting and changing. Also establish forums for immediate review and feedback and keep decisions at the lowest level possible to encourage and incorporate adaptation into the team's work process. Be on the alert for bureaucratic interference that could stymie the team's productivity. Utilize cross-teams. 
keeping team members open to new communication formats, ideas, perspectives, and solutions. The team reached a snag when several people could not attend weekly meetings. The team decided to set up a video conference and were able to continue to meet at a mutually agreed upon time. This idea proved to be invaluable as the two nurses verbalized that they were not going to be able to deliver their systems requirement document by the due date for the next meeting. At this point, the office manager stated that she would be able to help the nurses and the three worked out a plan to complete the task. The video conference ended on an encouraging note that the team was still on track. The necessary feedback was given to the radiology technicians who were presenting their system requirements at the meeting. Another way to view the growth or development phases or stages of teams is in the display on this slide. Edwin Lee suggests that teams mature to the point of their optimal effectiveness on the project or task at hand. After that, the very things that help them to become proficient with the demands of the project begin to lead toward decay of the team. Continuing with our example, the orthopedic surgeon's team has been meeting for the entire eight weeks. They managed to stretch and grow through the entire two months of meetings by never losing sight of the goal to have a system identified as the one for the practice to purchase. The minimal hurdles were overcome by the goodwill that everyone on the team possessed by realizing that it was a win-win for everyone to be active participants and to keep the momentum going. Once the team had given the group of surgeons the proposal for the proposed system, they felt confident that all their hard work was going to pay off by having the best system chosen for their practice. Problems with not disbanding teams are many. The life cycle of teams is a genuine cycle, meaning that there does come a time when the team members must move on. The obvious progression from maturity and delivering on the team's mission is to move toward a new stage. In 1975, Bruce Tuckman added a fifth stage to the forming, storming, norming, performing model. He called this stage adjourning, but it is also referred to as deforming or mourning. This stage covers the dissolution of the group, hopefully with the group purpose fulfilled and its members satisfied with their work. Some consider the adjourning stage as a supplementary phase to Tuckman's model rather than as a fully realized separate stage. This is because its focus, the end of the group, lies outside the scope of the first four established stages. This stage or phase affects the group members through feelings of loss, but is not especially relevant to the process of team development covered in the original four stages. However, an organization should respect the loss that some team members will experience. Another way of looking at this is to reference Morgan, Salas, and Glickman's team model. They propose that there are two distinguishable activity tracks present in all team development stages. The first activity track involves specific tasks being performed by the team. The second activity track is, quote, devoted to enhancing the quality of the interactions, interdependencies, relationships, affects, cooperation, and coordination of teams, end quote. Some team members may have difficulty moving on, depending on personality, work, and personal style. Often, closure of a project is pushed aside due to other competing priorities. It is important for the team members to take the time to acknowledge the completion of a project and that their hard work and purpose as a team was fulfilled. Take that time to enjoy and appreciate the accomplishments so that the team ends knowing that they have completed their charge and have been successful, rather than slowly withering into insignificance. Take the time to acknowledge the fact that everyone will be moving on to other teams and use this opportunity to positively refocus team members to those new projects. Continuing with our example, the team's proposal was well received by the surgeons who set about to meet with the vendor, knowing that the staff members were very happy with the product and had the requirements clearly stated. The team had a small party to celebrate the successful teaming with each other. Additionally, the team members felt that they could move on to other projects and be able to replicate the success of this team. Team leaders typically select participants based on the skills and expertise they will bring to bear on the team's goals. However, after a team achieves its first objective, its membership often remains stagnant 
even though its makeup may not be appropriate for future goals. For instance, IBM failed to conquer the challenging PC market because its business direction was guided by people who succeeded with mainframes in the past. Leaders often find it difficult to repeat success. In fact, most successes are followed by major failures. For example, the success of the IBM PC preceded the failure of the PC Junior. The popular Apple II came before the Lisa, another great failure. While military leaders General Norman Schwarzkopf and General Colin Powell experienced failure in Vietnam, they learned from their mistakes. They brought their new intelligence to lead Operation Desert Storm in the early 1990s. Failures ensure that people do not repeat past actions thoughtlessly. This concludes life cycle of HIT teams reforming and repositioning techniques. In summary, you learn to classify the life cycle stages of a team, apply strategies to move a team into the next formative stage, and reposition a team for a new challenge.